much for joining us. It's one o'clock, so it's time for a webinar. Um, this is Beth Hill speaking. I'm here with Ben Hunsberger, who is um, kind of the wingman today. He'll be answering any questions by chat. If you have any questions, you can use that chat tool. And um, he'd be happy to do that online. We'll also have time to answer questions at the end of the webinar. So we have just a few slides to go through before, um, just for some background. And then we're gonna just go right into a live demo. So I just wanna get started here. Um, today's topic is really about merging files and how to uh, create a sensei and use or maybe use merged files to look at that. So, Merging files has actually been a feature of Winless for quite a long time. We have added a new feature to Winless 10, which is called our Sensei plot. It's a dimensionality reduction algorithm that is based on the Kismi algorithm, but there are some differences. There's some improvement in resolution and also speed. Um, it's interactive in Winless. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how to use that as well. So why merge files in the first place? Um, it gives you the ability to compare or identify changes across multiple samples. You can visualize multiple samples on a single plot. You create consistent merge sensei plots to gate on those individual files, which is pretty much what we're gonna be talking about today. It also helps to streamline analysis for similar files. You can create a reference sample if you have groups to compare. Um, and then you can also increase number of events in low event samples. And I have an asterisk here because I just want to note that there are some best practices that need to be followed and requirements based on your goal and the analysis that you plan on doing. So merging files before proceeding, you want to just make some decisions and maybe get to know um, the program a little bit. The files should have the same measurements on the same channels. You can merge files with different markers, but you're really only gonna be able to work with the common markers and the markers that are in the first file that you'll be using. The acquisition voltages should match. There is a setting that could be changed, but if the intensities of the measurements are quite different, interpretation can then be quite difficult. So that's a consideration when you're doing your acquisition. You want to decide whether to use all your events for each file or determine how many events to sample. You have the option to do either one. You, so to have equal representation of populations, um, it's recommended that you sample the number of events in the file with the least number of events. Files are merged in order. That's important because you want to be able to keep track of, of the different files if you have different donor samples, for example. Transformations should be set and consistent um, before you proceed with the merging. And then you want to make a decision about whether you want to clean your files first or after merging, if that's a consideration um, with your samples. And then you also want to make sure your packet size in the program will accommodate all the events of the merged files. So the procedure is really quite simple. You're going to open the program, open an um, FCS file, and then you want to navigate to the first file to merge and select. Um, for this example, we're going to use a um, set of five donor files that have been acquired on a SciTech Aurora. And these are 33 color PBMC sample files that have been unmixed on the instrument software already. When you open the file, you're gonna click on the edit, um, click okay on the edit data source window. And this is if you, the first time you open a file into your list. On this edit data source window, you can change your, you know, edit transforms, edit measurement names and whatnot for those particular files you're using. You should, when you open the file, you should see the file name in the upper left corner of the data source window. And the next window you're gonna to come to is the create histograms window. And this is where you can add cleanup histograms. 
And for the sake of this demo, I'm going to open a previously created bundle with the histograms already in residence. And we're going to merge these files with a gating hierarchy set up to clean them. We're going to remove aggregates and debris and select for live cells. So at this point, I'm going to come to WinList. And I'm going to open a protocol bundle that I've already created. And click open. And you can see here that my preferences in the bundle file are loaded successfully. It gives you, WinList gives you some status uh, reports. I've just set up a, a, a simple um, cleanup scheme. I have a time by side scatter. I have a side scatter by live, so I'm selecting for live events. I have um, singlet set up as a uh, ratio for forward scatter area to height, also side scatter area to height. And then I, a basic gate that will just help remove some debris. Now to start the merging process, I'm going to go to, actually what I want to do first is I'm just going to um, give you an idea about how to check that packet size. So I'm going to just go to the edit tab, I'm going to go to my program controls and pretty simple to adjust. You're just going to go to the packet size limit. I have already set this to 300,000 attempts because I'm going to downsample 50,000 events for each of my five files. So I'm just going to click OK here. And then I'm going to go to the File tab. And scrolling down to this Export, I'm going to click on this arrow. And I get a pop-up menu where it comes to Merge Files. So I'll click on that. And I get an edit box that is the tools that will allow me to merge my data files. So generally, this parameters to save is already highlighted. So this is where you'll decide what parameters to save. We generally just save them all. It makes it a little bit easier. The output options, we have uncompensated linear, which is usually what we use. Um, FCS format, you have other formats, text format you could use as well if you if you desire. If you have a gating scheme already set up, WinList will recognize that gating scheme and allow you to choose which one that you want to use. So I'm going to choose G5 here, which is the cleanup gates for all of the um, histograms that you see above. I'll click on that, and I definitely want to include my gate hierarchy, so I will have um, that in the merged files. I'm going to uncheck the verify parameters match um, in case there's any differences between my files. What will happen if you keep that checked and there are differences, you'll just get a message that says there are um, differences and you want to proceed. And then I'm going to click my sample um, radio button, and I'll change this to 50,000 events per file. And over here in this window, I'm going to add my data files. And again, they're added. Um, you want to do this in order, so just have an order of files that you are um, expecting. And I'm going to click all of these. So I have five different files and they're just named donor one through five and I'll click open. What will happen now, I'm going to click OK. And I have the option to go ahead and name my merged file. WinList will start that um, name with the name of the first file. I'm going to add five here. I'm going to just add a demo, demo two, because I already did one earlier, just to make sure everything is good. And then I'm going to say save. You're going to get some status menus down here on the lower left 
you'll see that it's going through and reading each one of those data files. This window just stays up for a minute and then once everything's done, it will, it will close. You can see that it's reading the different donor files. Also see that up here, and then you get a toast message on the lower right that says export complete, and there's 250,000 events in that data file. So the next thing I want to do is I'm just going to open that merged file. I'm going to go to the My Home tab, and I'm going to click the Next FCS file. It will bring up the window where that data file has been saved, and I'm going to click on the merged file and click open. And now you can see that this, the display has changed just a little bit. So it has merged the files with that gating hierarchy. So we have live events here. We have singlets one and singlets two, and then the debris has been removed. Um, and all of these are displaying those five merged data files. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a 1P histogram that has my with my file ID so we can use that to do some gating with. And I want to set up a 1P histogram that's rectangular in shape, just give me a little bit more room. And I press down the Alt key on my keyboard and I'm going to just drag a space holder edit this to 1P, and then I'm going to scroll down, and when you have your merged files, you get your file ID parameter, which I'm going to choose here, and I'll click OK. So I have five different files, and there's a bunch of squiggly lines. Um, to see it better, I'm going to go, I'm going to just right click on the white space of this histogram. I'm going to graphics. I'm going to fill those histograms and make them solid. And I'm going to just change this to have no subset overlay. So you have a couple different options to for coloring of those histograms. You can overlay color subsets. You can stack them. But for now, we're just going to do no subset overlays. And I'm going to say, OK, so that just fills it with an, sort of an ungated um, coloring. The next thing we're going to do is something that I think is really cool and kind of unique to WinList. It's called a region array. So this will give you um, the opportunity to create different linked regions for each one of these data files so that we can gate on those. You want to make sure that this histogram is selected. I'm going to click my region array tool and I get it edit or create region array window. I don't need any results right now. I have five files, so I'm going to create five regions. And we just change this to zero because I don't know why this is negative. That's it. There is no such thing as negative zero. And I'm going to end at five because I want five regions. And I'm going to say, OK. So WinList will set up the regions in the appropriate um, spot based on the number of events that you've actually used and for each data file. And you can see that each one of these regions is um, has 20%. If you look down here on the bottom right, you can see that our data file has 250,000 events in it. The next thing I'm going to do is I want to edit each one of these labels so that I can identify the donors when I do some gating. I have a couple of different ways I can do this. I can right click on that particular label. And one of the things I just want to point out before I move on is that each one of these regions is actually a sticky region. So all of those regions are connected. If you need to adjust them for some reason, um, you adjust one and it will adjust the, the adjacent region as well. I'm just going to say edit properties and I get an edit um, box where I can edit my label here. 
so my first file was donor one. I'm just going to type in donor one. And just because I want to see my events, I'm going to say region events. So I use the drop down, min, drop down menu to choose region events for my statistics to show. I checked the show alias box and I'm going to click OK. And you can see here that the first region here, region six, is now donor one. And we can see 50,000 events. And if you want to change these, you can just grab that little circle and move that label up. Um, these are also labels that are not transparent, so you can actually see them against the background a little bit. The, this is good if you have you know, one or two or a couple different files that you want to um, edit the labels for. The other way that we can do this is I'm going to come to my home menu. I'm going to click on this edit region list box. And I have the option to go ahead and edit those labels from this menu as well. I, you can see that I've already done R6. If I highlight R7, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say donor 2. No, I'm not. I'm going to say dino 2. Well, you know what I mean. Don't. Okay, can't spell today. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to say region events. And I could do that for each one of these. Um, I'm just going to click OK now, just save some time here. And then when you look at, you know, you can go ahead and click all of those. So each one of those then becomes a gate um, that you can gate on. So the next thing I would do, I'm not going to just go ahead and do that because I just wanted to show you the, the method to do that. The next thing I would do if I were doing this um, for analysis is I would set up some histograms for gating for an overall gating scheme. But to save some time here, I'm going to open a protocol that I've previously created that has my gating scheme already created. I'm going to click on a bundle that includes my merged file. So a protocol bundle will include your data file. And I can show you here that I have page one is where I have my um, the file ID histogram with each one of my donors labeled and the same cleanup scheme that I did previously. And then on this page two, I have a pretty simple gating scheme, just looking at major cell populations. So I have um, my side scatters that I've, I've looked side scatter low and side scatter high, and then CD3 by 19, CD3 by um, PCR gamma delta, I have CD4 by 8. I have a couple of CD4 histograms that are gated on um, sort of quad strats looking at naive and central memory and effective memory and um, terminal effector subsets, and also a CD45 RA by 27, and then a T reg histogram. I have the same setup for CD8 T cells. I have a couple of histograms set up for B cells, looking at naive and memory B cells. I have a histogram for monocytes, looking at classical, intermediate, and non-classical monocyte. And then I have a histogram set up for NK cells. So the next thing I'm going to do here is just create a sensei. Excuse me. In WinList, we, our sensei is created as a calculated parameter. So I'm going to click my calculated I add parameter tool and I get an empty window because we don't have any yet. So what I want to do is I'm going to add one and that's going to bring up the edit calculated parameter box. And this is really pretty slick because all you have to do here is choose the example that you want to use. And here I'm going to click the what we call the F sen for sensei. And 
you will get measurement names um, filled in for you. So it, there's an X and a Y axis, obviously, that you're going to be setting up. So it's Sensei 1, Sensei 2. This is editable. So if you create more than one Sensei using different markers, you can actually um, edit this. And so you can use several different senseis in the same analysis. Now we have a choose button over here. I'm going to click on that. And this is allows us to choose the measurements that we want to put into that sensei. So you can have any number of measurements. Um, this is a 33 color file. I'm going to start editing. I don't want these measurements, but I do want to add most of the others and i'm just clicking through each one of these measurements in the data file i'm going to skip this because that's my live data i've already used that just keep going and that would be the last one so these i've used before i don't need those i'm going to click ok and then everything else I'm going to leave as is. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click OK here. And what you're going to see immediately down here on the lower right is that it's computing sensei. And it's giving you a status report on how um, complete that is. So I want to create a plot to use on my sensei for my sensei. So I just Click and drag, creating a histogram. This is going to be a 2P histogram. I choose Sensei 1 for my X axis, Sensei 2 for my Y axis, and click OK. And that basically took me longer to do than it did to calculate this Sensei. So this will open up. It says finish computing sensei. So each one of these populations represents these populations here. Um, one of the also one of the unique features to our sensei and win list is that it's interactive. I can identify these populations based on a couple different ways, really. Um, our coloring is showing gate hierarchy. I can look at the different coloring that is um, in the sensei. Here's a violet and kind of purple. I can look over here and see that these are B cells. The other way I could do this, though, is I can actually draw a region around that particular population. I can right click on that label and I can highlight the events in this region. What will happen is WinList will start to animate those events and you can see that this animation is in purple and I can come over here to my histograms and see where those events are animating and you can see again that this is CD19 positive, there's naive and um, memory B cells in that population. And I just go ahead and turn that off. Take a minute. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and annotate that and just um, identify these as B cells. I'm just going to delete that for now. There's a lot going on here with this computer, so a little bit slower than it usually is. All right, move that over there. Now, the other way you can um, interact with the, the Sensei is actually to choose one of your regions, and you can go ahead and do the same thing where you right click on the label. You can animate uh, the events. These are my um, gamma delta positive events. And then you can look over here on the his histogram to see where they're animating. And um, one of the interesting things I think about using this is 
you could it gives you a little bit of a hint of how events are not always in one place so um, there is a lot of overlap when you're when you're doing gating and a lot of events can actually be you know in different areas so it does help to also confirm the um, quality of your data. And you can do that for any number. And I could go ahead and label those if I wanted to. So I'm going to now um, show you a couple different things that you can actually do with this sensei. Um, if I wanted to take this further, you can actually clone this particular sensei and it will create a live copy. So I now have two exact senseis and I could either, and here I've actually created this already. So I, what I did is I created the sensei and I moved it to page three. So I did this before. And I did this because I have five data files. I cloned these, cloned this particular sensei. I just did that so I could activate this. It was part of the button. And I did this for each one of these um, particular senses. I'm going to open a different bundle now because I, I want to open my bundle that has all of the senses already created so I can show you a couple different things. And it's just going to go ahead and um, when you open a new bundle that has a sense, it will recalculate that particular sense. One of the reasons I'm doing this is because I now have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sensei plots. And you can see how fast actually this happens in WinList. Um, I have seven different senseis that are being calculated pretty, you know, it, within less than a minute, basically. And these are all live now. The other thing I wanted to show you is when you in our current version of WinList, um, Ben has added some features that actually make the Sensei much more consistent. So when you have an orientation of a particular Sensei, when you're using the same files, anytime you recalculate it, it's actually going to maintain that orientation much more um, consistently than what you may have be familiar with. So that's a really good feature. This is, um, you know, I have labeled this previously and this holds true. These are CD8 positive T cells. These are CD4 T cells. I have MK cells here, B cells, which were in the same position as I showed you previously. And then we have some mottos here. This is all colored by gate hierarchy. So coming back to our um, File ID, you can see that I have six different donors, or five different donors, sorry. And I have the first donor is R6. I'm going to come back to my senses. So to gate on these individual senses, I'm going to just change this to no gate. The coloring that I'm showing here is called a color density rainbow coloring. So it works kind of like a heat map. This is a sensei that's showing all five of those merged files. You can see um, the density of each, you know, where the, the basic um, event density is for all five. If I wanted to gate on this, I can just use, I'm going to just do that again so you can see. I just choose my gate icon. And I'm going to gate on R6. So that's my donor one. And now you can see there's a, a difference between what you be. I'll change this to um, 
this is all my end game. I'm going to change this coloring to the same color density. I'm going to say color gradient. This is rainbow coloring. And I'm just going to click OK. So we can kind of make a comparison here. This will be my five merged files. You didn't turn them on. I didn't turn them on. Why is that? Oh. Sorry, thank you, Ben. So I need to do my checkbox. Very good. So now this is my merged, the five merged files. And each one of these sensei plots is gated on a donor. So here's my donor two. So I have um, our seven, donor two. I have our eight, which is donor three. I have donor four and then donor five. So the, the density plot, you can see some of the differences in each one of these plots. The orientation will be the same. So here we have B cells. We have different populations and um, densities of B cells. We also have our CD8 T cells showing some differences here. CD4 T cells showing differences in populations here. And then, um, and so on, monocytes. Um, what you can do, and um, one of the things I want to point out is this particular population here, which is from donor two, that is, that, um, calculates near the CD4 T cell. This is a um, CD4 positive, CD3 positive population that's also CD57 positive and CD56 positive, which really only appears in this donor too. So this is a really good way to see some differences between um, donor files and groups as well. One of the things that we can do also is draw a region on each one of these if we want to see some of the differences between the files again these are interactive you'll get a statistic here i'm just going to go ahead and do this on a couple of different ones so you can really see um, that there are some Go ahead and do that. So this will also give you another way to evaluate each um, the differences between the different data files in your merged analysis. You have the option to color each one of these a little bit differently as well. So if you come to graphics, um, you can add, just go back to dots and we can just do our dot density plot. We can look at, we can add contours. Let's say, okay. And we can come back to our density should be all up, right? Dots are enabled. Sorry. I'm not good at checking boxes. So you could go ahead and do the color by gate hierarchy. You could add um contours if you want to. So it really depends on how you want to show things and what is important to your analysis, how you want to display things. So here we're, we're looking at um, color by gate hierarchy again, and we can see the different populations. You can do each one of those um, histograms the same way. You can change the histogram to a different type of color density coloring. We also have a color gradient that you can look at. So 
so you can see again that that population really does pop out and you can draw these regions um, any number of regions that you want and you know look at the differences between B cells look at the differences between the other populations as well so there's a lot of different options that you can use based on the tools and the goal of your analysis um, I encourage you to go ahead and just play with this um, take a couple of files that you know and see what is um, helpful and what would be um, useful in your presentations and useful in your analysis as well there's one more type of display that we could go ahead and look at and we have an option to use a file index analysis um, this is another way to look at it basically i've set it up the same way this is a little bit of a different a simpler gating scheme i created a sensei in the same manner that i have i'm using file index to create a representation of each one of those data files where we can see the different coloring and it's going to show us these pie charts showing you the differences between the population so this is another way to go ahead and look at um, to compare files or compare groups depending on the um, different populations that you have. And again, these are color coded so you can see some of this. Uh, we looked at that population in pink here, and that's that representative population from donor two. That's a little bit unusual as part of the CD4 T cells. So this is another way to do it. Um, there are also different ways to use this file ID. I have a histogram set up here that is showing me the differences between the expression of cd4 between these different data files so you can see i have you know maybe a higher density of cd4 positive t cells in these data files as opposed to these so that's another helpful um way to to sort of analyze and look at your data and compare data files. I have previously also created a report and you can add any of these, any and all of these histograms to your report, which can be um, printed out as a PDF, saved as a PDF, adding any number of histograms to that and any number of pages. So you're, you can save your analysis and um, do it that way. So it's pretty easy to create a report in WinList. You just click on the report button, get a new report, and you can drag any number of histograms over to this page. All right, so to summarize, uh, we've discussed how and why to merge files, and then some considerations before proceeding. We merged five different donor PDMC files after setting up a, a cleanup gating scheme. So the files were merged with the gating hierarchy using 50,000 events per file. We set up a 1P histogram to visualize the merged files with the file ID, and then added a region array to enable us to gate on each sample file. I, would have, I opened a protocol bundle with the gating scheme in place, added the sensei as a calculated parameter, I then created a Sensei plot. I showed you how Sensei is interactive with histograms. We explored different ways to use that Sensei to visualize the display, including cloning and gating on each Sensei for the individual files. The index analysis is another feature of WinList that you can use in tandem with Sensei to compare the files. And we, get to, we are going to, we have actually recorded this presentation. Um, we're going to put it on the YouTube channel and on our uh, website for you to refer back to if you are interested. 
There's also a new feature on our website called application samples or examples. Um, and what is it under resources? Yes. So it's under the resources tab on our website, and um, there's several different application examples that you can download and use and look at. And um, so I've reached the end. Um, we can answer any questions that you might have if you haven't already um, chatted with Ben. I want to thank SciTech for the data files. Um, you can contact us at verity.com bsh.com or me directly at boh at bsh.com and please stay tuned for more upcoming webinars with uh, new features in WinList, WinList 10 and also we'll be doing some gemstone and mod fit webinars as time progresses. We'll be at CITO if anybody wants to come visit with us at CITO. We'll be at booth 409 and um, be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Hi, Beth. Ben, uh, this is Paul. Um, I, yeah, I'm interested in the, the way that the Sensi plots are able to uh, sort of maintain the, the location of the CD4s and the CD8s. Um, yeah, I assume that every time you create a new Sensi, those, those are going to move around. Um, but could you explain? But you can lock it down when you when you in a sensi um can you explain more about how that works and um how you know how you can utilize that yes ben can <laughs> he's the person responsible for that it's nice it's a really nice feature i think, I think it it's is important. really it's, it's great. Cool. um thanks thanks for that question so um with the uh, pre-release of winlist um subsequent to winlist 10 full release, we've added um, essentially a way for the program to sort of seed the locations of uh, the clusters in the Sensei based on uh, your, your dating hierarchy. Um, so this is something that we, we have had done previously with, uh, with Gemstone and Pass Setter, where uh, in the Sensei there, um, those senses don't don't rotate uh, much, um, and, and it, because those packages use the the cell types um, to to sort of seed a location. Um, so rather than just randomly assigning events to start with to a location on the sensei plot, and then having sensei distribute them, we actually put them in a place where we think related events are. So your CD4s will be initially put near one another and the CD8s will be put near one another. And the specific rotation or orientation, I should say, of the populations is, is going to be based on whatever dating scheme you have set up. So in the one that we're looking at right now, um, Beth had a simpler gating scheme that is the one I think she's loading. And so the rotation is a little bit different between them, even though it's the same data. Um, but uh, for a given gating scheme, it will be consistent, um, at least to start with. There are, there are, um, there are, Things that can happen within the sensei due to the specific events it's seeing that can cause uh, orientations to shift. So if you all of a sudden have a very large population where you didn't have one before, that can just spatially cause things to move around because the sensei is trying to keep things separated. Right. It's a long answer to a pretty simple question <laughs> that you asked. <laughs> No, I, 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 no, I, I appreciate the uh, this complex. Um, uh, so, what, if I understand correctly, then what you're saying is that if, if I want those CD4s to say be in the lower left, um, and I was creating a new a new data set, um, if, I, if I was to start off, or if I was to utilize the same uh, uh, 
uh, dating hierarchy or um, that it yep. would begin to uh, recreate. It wouldn't necessarily be the same, but it would it would that it would at least be around those types of orientations. Is, is that yes, is that's that correct? correct. Yes, that yep. is correct. That's right. Cool. Nice job, Beth. Oh, thanks, Paul. Well, at this point, you know, we'll just go ahead and, and close the webinar, but please don't hesitate to contact me or Ben or us. Um, Chris Mills is sitting here as well. He can help you. He's our tech guy. Um, so we're happy to answer questions. Again, check the website. There'll be uh, some application examples. It's a new feature on the website, which is pretty cool, really. And um, we'll see you at sign up.